Greetings, I'm Neon Slice, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get S plus rank with Claire on Resident Evil 2 Remake. The requirements are you have to finish the game in under 2 hours and 30 minutes, and you only have up to three saves. That means you can only save three times. In this video, I'll be playing on PC. This is the updated guide. I'm recording this at the end of 2023 if you're watching this later. Anyway, I'm also using a mod to look like Claire from Code Veronica, okay? but that doesn't really matter because I'm going to be changing at the first save. But anyway, the first thing I'm going to be telling you to do is to get really good at this part, okay? So we're going to dodge, don't touch that zombie. We're going to dodge that zombie and run here and then immediately turn around, don't move, do a 180 degree turn. Wait for the zombie to go to the right and then walk past him. If he follows you into the hallway, just shoot him once or twice in the leg and walk past them. If you don't want to waste those two bullets, you can restart the game. Take a left here and go down the, the aisle, whatever you want to call it, and that is the gas station. This shouldn't take you longer than 30 seconds. It really doesn't matter if it takes you one minute or, or so, but just get really good at learning the, the basics in this area. All right, so we're going to be skipping all cutscenes, of course, because that does add to your time. But uh, yeah, so we're going to be turning around immediately as soon as the, the cutscene ends. Um, on PC, it is Q, I believe. On controller, it is back circle or something like that. Anyway, learn how to do a 180 degree turn because you're going to need it. So we're going to be moving onwards here. But as always, if you find these videos helpful or entertaining, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll make sure to answer any questions that you have in the comments. But uh, yeah, so... I need you to do exactly as I do. It's okay if you mess up, but try to do exactly as I do, okay? So we're gonna stick to the left and then as soon as we come up here, we're gonna walk over this corpse and then over this other corpse and like this. Take this trajectory. It's like a little zigzag that you have to do. That way you don't get grabbed. Anyway, immediately after we step into the police station here, we're gonna interact with this panel and go into the east hallway okay so this is the east hallway so i'm gonna be grabbing a lot of things in specific orders okay so it doesn't mean i'm skipping things or i'm forgetting things okay so everything that i do is done on purpose okay unless i tell you it isn't so i need you to learn all of these things and pay close attention to my inventory because inventory management it is the most important thing in this game. As soon as we grab the handgun ammo from that room, we're gonna go into the bathroom here and grab the first aid spray here, okay? So in this playthrough, I'll be giving you a ton of healing, okay? So you have like 20 plus um, heals by the end of this playthrough, so keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna go into this room and we're gonna skip this cutscene. As soon as we are done with that, we're gonna go up to this fan and then wait for the zombie to break through and then immediately run past him. Don't make him go into the hallway if you can help it. After that, we're gonna go all the way back. Stick to the right. Stick to the right or, the, or you will get grabbed here. So we're gonna stick to the right, stick to the right. Just, just look at the right wall and stick to the right. If you get grabbed, that's okay. There's a first aid spray. It's okay. You can mess this up. If you don't wanna do the beginning again, you can just heal, don't worry. All right, so this is where I have problems with my knife uh, so I was using an outfit mod and the apparently the outfit mod makes your knife break faster so that's why you're gonna see me change outfits later anyway we're gonna open that with the knife and then we're gonna grab the first aid spray and then we're gonna get the ink ribbon I guess and then put it all into the box put it all in the box except for the handgun and the handgun ammo we're gonna skip this green herb because we're gonna grab it later and get the handgun ammo okay so this is the West Hallway. The West Hallway, also known as Liquor Hallway, but in the remake it's called West Hallway. So we're gonna trigger this corpse from the ceiling so it doesn't block us later, because that will be a problem later. All right, so get familiar with the layout of this area because you're gonna have to struggle later, uh, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to help you, okay? Stick to the left here into this room. There's handgun ammo right there and a map. It's important that you grab maps that way you don't get lost and uh yeah in case you've missed some items it'll show the items on your map anyway as soon as we jump across here we're gonna turn around 
and get the handgun ammo. So this is where I teach you about the crosshairs. If your crosses are together like this, you will have a higher chance of dealing critical damage. So that's why we're waiting. That's why I'm waiting. See, waiting. So critical damage means uh, when you explode a zombie's head. So we want to get rid of these specific zombies, okay? I'm only going to be killing zombies that 100% need to be killed. Do not skip these and make sure that they are dead, okay? So once again, wait for your crossers to be together like this and then shoot. If they get too close, just take a step back just take it easy, don't worry, I'm giving you enough time to do everything. But please, make sure that these enemies are dead. Don't get nervous that you might miss. Uh, it's okay, he he is he does this every time. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna have enough handgun ammo here, by the way. I will be crafting some later. But uh, yeah, and I mean it, like, make sure they are dead. Like, check them. Just because they fall to the floor doesn't mean they're dead, okay? So you need to make sure that they're dead. And there it is, there's the critical. Anyway, grab the gunpowder here in the west office and the handgun ammo from the locker. And the first save is 9, 15, 7. And you have to do it in this order, otherwise it will not open. And this will have the inventory pouch, the hip pouch, now we're gonna go to Leon's table here, desk, and we are going to insert NED and MRG. But of course, speaking of Leon, I have a guide for Leon's S Plus as well, if you wanna check that out. And uh, yeah, so this is the updated guide. This features a brand new set of strategies, so pay close attention, okay? Anyway, we combined the speed reloader with the handgun right there, and we're gonna insert 109, and that's it. We're not gonna do anything else. So I'm not gonna be grabbing the grenade launcher because the grenade launcher is just given to you later. So that's it. I just need the handgun ammo from there, 109, that's it, I'm done. All right. Before we go into the safe room, there will be some items here that we're gonna pick up, and we're going to be boarding up the window here. Don't forget, board up the window and then go back into the dark room. So this is the dark room. We're gonna be here a couple times, so yeah, it's pretty cool. There's some ink ribbons there. You only need three in the entire playthrough, so don't worry about grabbing more than three. <laughs> Get the handgun ammo in there or the gunpowder. And we're gonna combine these herbs. And we're gonna put everything into the box here, except for the handgun and the handgun ammo. So we're gonna be doing some cleanup stuff here so we're gonna kill some zombies so we're gonna grab the ammo here from the zombie and then we're gonna stand here wait for your crossers to be together and shoot this guy make sure that he is dead before you start attacking the other one okay so hopefully you get a critical here once again critical 100% kills them you'll know because their, their head will explode okay so don't be afraid of checking them that they're no longer moving and uh yeah so I'm doing this on PC but of course um, you can do this on a console, whatever. Literally, I've done it on a console. It's same same strategy, by the way. So this is a console-friendly strategy. So after we've killed the other guy, we're gonna turn around and shoot the lady here. Once again, make sure that your crossers are together. If she gets too close, go up to this yellow thing and just get your distance from her. All right, make sure that she is fully dead, because once again, there we go. If they fall down, doesn't mean they're dead. So, make sure she's dead, and then we're gonna proceed. So, we're gonna go to the third floor here, okay? The second floor, and then the third floor. So, this is the third floor. And before we go into this hallway, we're gonna grab the hand ammo that's on that table. And we're gonna insert the code DCM. So, I'm actually grabbing the SMG later, so we need this ammo, okay? We are going to be needing this ammo. After that, we're gonna grab the spade key, and that is pretty much 50% done of this first section. What was that? We're gonna be running. Run, run, run. Don't you worry. I'm gonna get this gunpowder. I'm not gonna grab those boards. Anyway, we're gonna trigger this body to come down, and then we're gonna shoot it seven times, okay? It's seven times in the head. Doesn't matter if your crossers are together or not. 
make sure that he gets shot until he falls down. So we're going to do that because he will grab you later if you don't do that. Okay, so if he falls off the ceiling, that means he's dead. All right, so we've reached the halfway point here of this first section. We're going to be walking as Mar Marvin talks to us. Watch how this girl might come up the stairs sometimes. If she does, just make sure you shoot her in the head with the same exact strategy of waiting for your crossers to be together. So if she is too close to you, get your distance. Don't touch the ladder in this room, okay? Wait for your crossers. And there we go. See? It works. And then after that, we're going to kill the guy here next to this door. Once again, wait for your crossers to be together. And boom. See? Do not touch the ladder. Don't touch the ladder. Be careful because sometimes you might do it accidentally. Move these bookshelves from left to right. And then there will be some handgun ammo right there. Don't touch that guy. Don't worry. He will not bother you unless you touch him or unless you touch the ladder. That's why I need you to not touch that ladder because otherwise that zombie will be triggered. We're going to grab this book. And before we go, we're going to get the first medallion right here. There's a, some gunpowder there that you can combine. And the first medallion solution is as follows. So it is the fish. <laughs> Scorpion and the water thingy. And that's the unicorn. Okay. All right. And see, we had enough inventory right there. After that, we're going to open up this door, the spade key door. And then I'm going to move to the right and there will be some ammo here. Once again, you will have enough ammo this entire playthrough, don't worry. You need to take out those zombies. If you do run out of ammo for some unknown reason, you do have some gunpowder. The small gunpowder is to be used for handgun ammo only, okay? So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, there we go. So to solve this puzzle, it is Lion, Branch, Eagle. Got a little a little bit worried there because got it mixed up. It's been a while. But anyway, Lion Branch Eagle. And that's the Lion Medallion. And we're almost at the first save point. So after the cutscene, we are going to interact with the Divinity Statue. And we're going to put in both medallions. This will clear up our inventory, so don't forget. Before we inventory manage, we're going to open up this spade key, but do not go through it. Just open it up. That way we can uh, discard it later. And before we touch the item box, grab the green herb from that room and put it in the chest here. All right. So we only need the book, the key, the handgun and the handgun ammo. Okay. So those are the only things that you need for this part. So we're going to go to the right here. And we're going to actually interact with a new safe. But yeah, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below. Hopefully you enjoy these videos. I know most of you don't need them, so I don't expect this video to do that well. But I really wanted to have an actual updated guide for Claire. But anyway, we're going to grab the herb and then we're going to open up this safe. The combination is 6 to 11. There we go. 6 to 11. And that gives us the high capacity mag for the next pistol that we will be grabbing. Use the spade key for the last time and don't forget to discard it. I'm gonna grab these boards. Not necessary, but I will implement them into this playthrough. Don't use the weapons locker key card. We don't need it. Don't you worry. You will have the grenade launcher later. We just don't need it right now. Combine the book with the arm and get the red ruby or the red jewel, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's important that you do this right now, so we don't have to come back later. Examine the item and it will actually give you the stone. The red jewel. All right, that's it. That's the only thing we need. I'm not grabbing the weapons locker key card because it's not useful right now. And uh, we're also skipping this green herb right here just because of inventory management. After the cutscene, we are going to go to the right here and grab some handgun ammo from these barrels. You might have some excessive, <laughs> uh, some excess handgun ammo, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, so 
we're gonna use the bolt cutters here, but sometimes there's a zombie here. Watch out, okay? Watch out. So open the door, make sure that there's no zombie there. Don't run in. It's dangerous. Like I said, it's dangerous. But it's okay to take damage. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's perfectly fine. Don't worry. Better to do it right now than later. Use the bolt cutters on this door. Grab the flash grenade right there. Put in your inventory. Don't mess around too much. Don't grab the ink ribbon. So we're gonna put the boards on this window and grab the handgun ammo from that guy's body. And we're gonna go into this hallway, get the valve handle and the special gunpowder. And I'm actually going to heal here and grab the electronic part. So if you don't have enough space, feel free to discard something like the handgun ammo or just eat the herb. Um, but yeah, sometimes you have too much handgun ammo, so yeah, keep that in mind. It's okay, trust me. You will have enough stuff to do to do amazing later. So I'm not healing yet, but if you did take damage, feel free to heal. Trust me, you will have healing later. So for this next part, we are going to be needing the the handgun, the bolt cutters, the handgun ammo, and the valve handle. Okay. So, only four items. So, this is where stuff gets a little bit spooky. So, I need you to be at full health if you're not confident with dodging, okay? So, as soon as we come up here, aim down and make sure that there are no enemies here. So, if there's a guy right here, shoot him. There we go. Sometimes he's earlier into the hallway, so that's why I said aim down. But all you have to do is just shoot these two people in the legs. Don't kill them, just shoot them in the legs and run past them. Literally, if you stop to kill them, you will die. So yeah, just shoot them in the legs and walk past them. Make sure that they're not right around the corner. Use the bolt cutters there for the last time. Discard it, get the electronic gadget, get the green herb, get the flash grenade, and we're gonna open this door. That's it. So now we have the means to acquire the final medallion. So, we're gonna go into the dark room here. And we are going to put away some things if you want. But it's okay, we're gonna be doing some inventory management in the star's office. So we're gonna acquire the detonator from the star's office. So there's a portable safe there if you wanna do that. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, grab the the grenades there and this is cap cap this is the only locker from this side that has items in them don't open the other one because you'll get scared use the valve handle there and we are ready to go to the star's office don't worry this guy will not will not attack you he's just sitting there there's some gunpowder right there some grenades incendiary grenades very useful later on and uh yeah just run, run, run. Don't let the liquor get you, because you can skip the whole scene by just, just just keep running, basically. Don't stare at that liquor, just keep running. Grab everything here, flash grenades, grenade rounds, flame rounds, and the 9 volt battery right there, and we're gonna combine it with the electronic gadget. So now we have a detonator. Now we're gonna walk, walk, just walk. Do not sprint out of the star's office. Just walk. We're walking, sticking to the right. Because, look, there he is. So, the liquor is completely blind. So, if you walk, he will not hear you. So, unless you get too close to him. So, you just have to take your distance and walk. Now, we're going to open this door and we're going to go up the stairs. And we're ready to almost be done with the RPD first section here. So make sure you have this the, the flash grenade equipped. And uh, there you go. So we're going to interact with the C4 and put the detonator on it. You will have 10 seconds to get away. Okay. So I'm going to stand here. So the door doesn't get closed behind me. Wait for the explosion and then run. Okay. 
And then we're going to go in here and solve the final medallion puzzle. The combination is the, the head. <laughs> the, I think it's like a, a woman's head. And um, here we go. The, the bow and the snake. The bow and arrow and the snake. Woman, bow and arrow, snake. Equip your flash grenade. Okay, have it in your hand. And slowly walk out. As soon as he comes out, boom. Throw it. Okay, that's it. It has to land directly on him. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you, you throw that grenade there right as he comes in. And that's one of the ways of doing that. You can dodge him, but I'm making sure that you do this correctly without getting grabbed or taking damage. Now we're going to back, go back down and we're going to insert the final medallion. And congratulations, you've made it to the very first save. So we should be about 20 minutes in. You need to do this segment in under 30 minutes. If you take 25 or 30 minutes, feel free to do it again, because this is the section that is the easiest. Okay, so make sure that you do that. Anyway, first save right here, grab the ink ribbon and use it on the typewriter machine. And that's it. That is the first save. So we're going to interact with the box here. And I'm going to bring with me two combat knives and one flash grenade. So I have changed my outfit here because the outfit that I was using had a bug where the knives were breaking too fast. So yeah, if you're playing on PC, make sure you're not playing with any other mods. If you're trying to go for S plus because they can inter they can interfere with your with your knives and stuff like that. Also, I'm doing this on the latest update for RE2 remake. But yeah, anyway, walk down the stairs all the way down and grab the hand grenade. Okay, so your inventory should look like this. Two knives, one flash grenade, and the heavy grenade that you can grab at the bottom of the stairs. So this is the very first boss fight. That's why we saved here, because it it might be a little bit difficult to do on console, okay? The reason why I'm saying that is because we're gonna be doing a knife only boss fight. Okay, so do exactly as I do, okay? As soon as the battle starts, stick to his left, equip your knife. You have to have it equipped, okay? Make sure your knife is equipped, and then just start knifing him. Then when he, when he, after you've knifed him enough times, equip your hand grenade, throw it at him, equip the other knife, and then do the same exact thing. If you put him down like this, you, you've done it correctly. So basically what you're trying to do is stick to his left, that way you get his arm and his leg at the same time. If you think he's gonna grab you, equip the flash grenade. Equip the flash grenade, okay? So this is why we brought the flash grenade. It's okay if you get grabbed, okay? So this will stun him and voila, you should be done by now. Knife him again, there you go. If you're having trouble with this fight on, on your console, or if you think you can do the knife thing. Trust me, try it, try it multiple times. Try it multiple times. Your objective is to stab him on his, on your left side. That way you get the arm and the leg at the same time with the knife. Anyway, grab everything here. But if you do think that you cannot do it, that you've been trying for hours, feel free to use your, your handgun. But honestly, you don't need it. Okay, so I've done this in console and it's a little bit rough, but it still works. That's why I'm giving you the flash grenade and the heavy grenade. Anyway, we're going to go up the ladder here after we've grabbed everything from the bottom level. Interact with the locker and get the herb. And then we're going to follow Sherry here. So we should be 24 to 25 minutes in at this point in the playthrough. If you are way above that, you need to restart. <laughs> also, if you die, make sure you reload from the main menu. Otherwise, it will count <laughs> towards your time. So, yeah, make sure you do that. So, again, if you die, go back to the main menu and reload your latest save. So, the only thing we need right now is the handgun ammo. We're going to get the handgun ammo and the magazine. The uh, special magazine that we got like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, that one. And then after that, we're going to go up the ladder here. So this is actually like a chill moment. You really shouldn't be worried about anything here. 
unless you're scared of liquors, because we're going to be dealing with a lot of liquors, but don't worry. As long as you believe in yourself, you'll be able to do it. Okay. And if you don't believe in yourself, I believe in you. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to this door here with the green light, and we're going to be doing some stuff. So we're going to interact with this yellow box. This yellow box has a key. So we're going to turn it around, examine it, and open it. And there it is. There's a key. But before we go, we're going to go into this room. Don't talk to anyone here. Just grab the grenade launcher rounds and leave. That's it. Okay. Now we're going to go back to the parking lot. Go up to this cop car and use the key, the car key. Turn it around. There we go. And this is your new weapon for the rest of the game. We're going to combine it directly with the magazine. Now we have a 26 round handgun. Discard the car key and then let's take a right here in the dark hallway. Yes, there's a liquor, but it's okay. He's a scripted event. You can run here. Grab the blue herb and stop. Just stop running. Just start walking. Okay. Start walking. Grab the white thingy from that thing. And uh, we're going to walk. Stick stick to the left. And then after you get to this point, stick to the right. You see this red light? Yeah, stick to it. Just keep walking. There are two liquors here. We're going to be walking. You walk, walk, walk. You can start running here. Don't worry, but... I really didn't want to trigger them, so... Anyway, open the second... The second thingy here, and then get the... Red herb, and then we're gonna push it... Push it again, so it doesn't block us later when we have to run away. And, uh... And then the last one here... This one is a dead zombie, but... We're gonna grab the flash grenade, and then we're gonna push it again, if you want. Or you can just dodge him later. Anyway, make sure that you get this diamond key. That's the only thing we need. After you grab the diamond key, everyone will wake up. So get ready, do a 180 degree turn, and then let's get out of here. We're going to get out of here. Just run, 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 run. Just run. If you take a little bit longer, you can shoot that guy in the leg and dodge him. Okay? And then we're going to walk. Just walk. Walk, walk, stick to the left, do not touch the liquor, because if you are too close to the liquor, he will kill you. Alright, so stick to the left, just walk. I'm not running at all, just keep walking. There's another liquor here, this is the third liquor. Stick to the right, stick to the right, sometimes he may touch you, if you touch him. And uh, that's it, we're going to just walk our way back to the parking lot, and now you can start running, that's it. So we're going to walk around this column and around these cars. And now we have the diamond key. So we can open the door. And this will have an upgrade for the grenade launcher and some other things. Don't forget to grab everything. So the upgrade for the grenade launcher, we're only gonna be using it right before the G3 Birkin in the nest. So that is the semi-final battle. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're not gonna, we're not gonna combine the grenade launcher. We're not gonna upgrade the grenade launcher until the uh, the Birkin, the bipedal Birkin, the big Birkin, Birkin, <laughs> the G3. You'll know. I'll tell you later. Anyway, I'm gonna take the elevator and get the green herb right here, and we're gonna combine it with the red and blue, and now we've reached the Chief Iron's office. Don't worry about anything here. We're just gonna make sure that we have two slots, at least two slots enabled here. Two slots open. But uh, yeah, I'm just bringing my handgun and my handgun ammo. And we're gonna grab the hard key. So this is a good time to take a break. You can pause your game. Uh, the timer will stop. In fact, if you see the timer at the bottom left when you pause, that is your timer of your playthrough. Like you can literally pause your game and you can just come back later as long as it's paused and your PlayStation or PC doesn't turn off or Xbox. Anyway, grab the hard key by examining the framed picture and we're going to grab the SMG ammo and we're going to store the SMG ammo. 
And we're gonna take the handgun, the handgun ammo, the hard key, and the jewel. Alright. So, we're gonna be doing a lot of back and forth here. So, you can do this in whatever order you want, but this is the order that I did it in. So, I went upstairs first. Grab the boards. Okay, the wooden boards. Then we're gonna grab the flash grenade. And the handgun ammo from the lockers. Then I'm gonna go all the way down, okay? We're gonna go all the way down and get the heart key door. This is where we will get the stars key uh, badge thing. Okay, all right, we're gonna go down the stairs. Before we go down the hallway, we're gonna put the boards right there. That way that guy doesn't break in. And go to the left, grab the white thingy from the locker. This will be useful later. And use the heart key on the heart key door. Before we grab the key item, we're gonna get the handgun ammo. And then we're gonna interact with this little box. And we're gonna combine it with the jewel. Okay? Combine it. This will give you the dongle. As soon as you get this, literally just run back out. Don't stop. Don't get scared. Okay? Just run back out. Don't sit there. If you wait one second in there after you grab the red jewel box, you will probably take damage. So just grab it and leave. And then you can combine it later. Anyway, so um, I'm going upstairs to grab... Uh, to grab something. But it's okay. You can do this in whatever order. So I'm getting the blue herb, which is not necessary. You can leave it there if you really want to. But I'm grabbing it. Anyway, I'm killing these enemies. I'm making sure they are dead. So make sure they are dead. Go. Go for headshots always. Always go for headshots. If you're trying to kill enemies. Because of the criticals. Oh, wow. That guy just, just did that, huh? Anyway, make sure they're both dead. Like, literally make sure. Because otherwise you're going to get grabbed later. And then we're going to grab the large cog. Here, whatever it's called. And we're going to get the flame rounds. So this is why I said you don't need the blue herb. You can leave it for later. Uh, but anyway, there's a knife in there. Um, I'm going to go back down and empty up my inventory. And then I'm going to come back up. But it's okay. If you waste like an extra one minute to go back and forth. And, you know reassign your inventory that's okay that's okay i'm gonna be doing this run with like over 30 minutes to spare so don't you worry as long as you don't die you'll be fine so i'm gonna take the hard key the handgun the handgun ammo the large cog the large gear <laughs> and uh yeah that's it handgun handgun ammo key and the large gear and the uh, badge, okay? The badge is the star's badge. Get the knife. Get the get the uh, electronical part here. Boxed electric part. We're gonna examine it, and that will reveal the cube, the almighty cube. And we're gonna do another back and forth thing. We're gonna go back down, and we're gonna get we're gonna get stuff. We're gonna put stuff in the inventory. We're gonna. Put stuff in the uh, item box. There we go. So that's it. I'm only taking the key, the badge, the handgun, the handgun ammo, and the large gear. That's it. That's all you need. Anyway. So. Going up the stairs. Go outside here. There's a blue herb here. If you want, you can take it. If you want shields later. Or, you know, in case you get poisoned. But... It's not strictly necessary. Let's just say that. Anyway, go down the ladder. I accidentally went up, but it's okay. It's okay to waste time. Anyway. So I'm going to right here. And then we're going to go down the stairs here. So there might be an enemy here waiting for you. Next to the stairs. So make sure you shoot them in the knees. What we want from here is this yellow thing. That's it. We don't care about anything else. There's some herbs here, but we don't care. So make sure this guy is stunned, okay? Because he, he lunges at you. And then we're going to shoot the other one. So there are two enemies here that you need to stun in the legs. And then run past them. That's it. 
That's exactly all you need to do. Stun them and run past them. But you need to be very quick, otherwise stunning them will not matter. It's okay, I believe in you. Don't worry. It's okay if you get grabbed, you can get the, the these herbs that I'm giving you right here and you can heal. Anyway, enable the lever and there he is, Mr. X. So we're going to run back out, go to this red chair right here, this bench. We're going to wait for him to break through the door, okay? After he's like in the middle of the room, we're going to run. So I did something there to force him to attack and dodged him. That way, that gives me time to uh, outrun him. You don't have to risk that. It's okay if he doesn't punch. Just make sure that you don't get hit. Please don't get hit. Grab the green herb, combine it with the blue and green, the blue and red, and we're gonna go out the waiting room into the main hall. And now we're gonna be doing something that it's not super necessary, but if you are so stingy about your inventory management, you're so obsessed with it, you 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 feel like you need more management here. There's a box here. I left the green herb. I left the red, green, and blue herb in there because I don't need it. I don't need it. Anyway, go through this bait key door here, and there might be zombies here. If you didn't kill the last zombie here, he is a janitor. And then we're gonna go out the, this door, walking. There's a there's a liquor here, so we're walking. Just walking, and then into the final hard key door. Now we can discard the hard key door, the hard key thingy. And uh, before we get the jack handle, we are going to grab the grenade, and then we can grab the jack handle right there. There it is, the tool. And then sometimes Mr. X shows up here. If you did the perfect dodge that I showed you, he will not be here. But most often than not, he will break through the door and come at you. You can just run around here and dodge him. But remember, there's a liquor in the hallway. Okay, so we're gonna run out here and then this brown door, we're gonna walk it. Just walk, just walk, because the liquor is right there. Even if Mr. X is right onto you, you have to time it correctly. Anyway, that's it. Now we can run in the west office and up this staircase and we are ready to complete the RPD section. But before we do that, we're gonna go to the stars room. This is why we needed the badge, okay? We needed the badge to get the MQ-11. This is one of the key items for this playthrough. This is the SMG. Okay, we're gonna walk, we're gonna walk, we're gonna walk here. Do not break into a sprint because you will trigger the liquor. Okay, so we're just walking. Just walk, there he is, see? And we're gonna open up our inventory and you can examine the key dongle thingy and it becomes a usable item. We're gonna insert it on the PC and then interact with the PC itself. Okay. <clears throat> you can get the SMG there. So SMG stands for submachine gun, in case you didn't know. Anyway, this is where I need you to play with headphones, okay? Because I need you to hear the footsteps. Wait for Mr. X to leave this area. This is usually where he catches up to you, okay? Listen to for those footsteps. Listen, let's just, you have to listen, okay? So after you're 100% sure that he is no longer here and he's opened a couple of doors, because yes, you can hear the doors, we're just gonna walk. Walk, walk, walk. We're just walking because there's still a liquor here. Also, if you run, Mr. X will hear you as well. Okay, so we're still walking. We're still walking. Listen for those footsteps and see to the right right there. Yeah, we're just, we're just continuing walking. It's okay if you have an extra minute better to do that than to die. I'm gonna go here and interact with this thing and use the jack handle tool. And then from left to right, we are going to move all the bookshelves all at once. And finally, we're gonna go up the ladder because we're no, we're no longer going to return here. So it's okay to use the ladder now. And we're gonna walk across this bridge that we've just created. And I need you to go through this door and stick to the right. Stick to the right, don't grab anything, just stick to the right, enter this door. 
and we're going to insert the large gear. After the cutscene, we are actually going to grab the large gear again. Don't forget the large gear. A lot of people forget the large gear. You have to do a lot of back and forth. So yeah, grab that. And then we're going to go into this hallway, get the big powder. It's not super, it's not super important. As long as you have one, really, you don't need more than that because we're using it to make acid rounds and acid rounds are only useful for the Birkin fight, the G3. Anyway, go up the stairs and hopefully you've grabbed your large gear because you're going to need to put it in here. Get the small gear and then put the big gear in there. Now we're ready to get the final cube part. We're, we should be 40 minutes in, okay? If you're at one hour here, you can still do it, but that's a big waste of a time. Like, you better get good at this part, because this is the easy part. That works. Right? Before you go, grab the orange box, and then examine it, and there it is, the Aegis Cube Conductor C672. Before we break into a sprint, we're going to open this door and make sure there's no zombies. Look down that hall to the left. Yeah, that, there's, that's where that zombie should be. If you're 100% sure there's nobody else, we're going to go up to this guy and we're going to shoot him a couple times on the leg or once. If you're lucky, and then we're going to run past him. That's it. One bullet or two. That's all you need. So that we're going to open this door. And remember, this is where I told you to kill ev every enemy. But if you didn't kill every enemy, you might have some enemies here. So get ready. But yeah, hopefully you killed everyone here. And that's it. We did the RPD. Now we are fully done with this first part of the game. <laughs> and we're going to go to the box, and grab the other cube. It doesn't matter what else you have in your inventory. As long as you have the two cubes, you'll be able to do this puzzle. So we're going to go into this door and to the cube panel right here. And this is how you solve this puzzle. After we solve the puzzle, we're gonna grab the key card and the game will switch to Sherry. So as soon as we start with Sherry, we're gonna get the creepy doll and interact with it in your inventory. This doll has a cube in it. This is how you solve this puzzle. There is a very effective way of solving this puzzle. This will yield an achievement or trophy if you so desire, but you can just kind of eyeball it if you don't want to figure it out. But yeah, there is a strategy to solving this. But just go with your gut, don't think. <laughs> anyway, um, if, a, if a cube has two stars in the top, it means it goes in the middle. That's essentially my own personal rule, I think. I think if I remember correctly. Anyway, get the scissors and use them on this duct tape. I guess kids were doing this in this orphanage. <laughs> How did the grown-ups miss that? Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go here. There's some files here, by the way. If you're doing the files run, you can read some files here. Interact with this item. And we're gonna continue onwards here. So once we reach this point with Sherry, 
We're gonna run past everything. Don't grab anything, by the way. The only thing you need is this key. Okay. And then we're gonna turn around to the right and start running. Do not stop because you will die. Literally. Literally do not stop. Don't interact with anything other than holding the button to go forward. And uh, yeah, there we go. Crouch here. I think it's L2. It's whatever button you use to aim. Anyway, we're going to crouch behind this white thing. I don't know what that is. But yeah, we're going to crouch here. In a way where you can see where the chief irons is. See? Like that, like that. Do not get grabbed. Please do not. Okay? Do exactly as I do. And time it correctly. Use sound cues and your environment to know when to move. But as long as you try to mimic what I do, you'll be fine. Alright. So, he's gonna go from left to right. Do not let him see you. Yeah, so you slowly move here. As long as his face is never facing you, you should be okay. Yeah. So moving a little bit to the left. He will say things, okay? So, use those quotes to know when to move. Right? So we have 46 minutes. Bitch has gotta be here when he says, God damn it, that's your cue to go. Run, run, run. And then hide behind this chair right there. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. You can only move after he says, Son of a bitch. Otherwise, just be crouched behind this chair. Just wait very patiently, crouched, and he says that, and then we're gonna continue onwards, and then hide behind these books, and voila, you're done with the difficult part. Now all we need to wait for is him to go into the bathroom. There we go. So, after that, we're gonna interact with the keys, and immediately turn around. Okay, so press Q or whatever it is for you, grab the keys and start running because this is this is where he will grab a shortcut and actually jump over the castle, the little toy castle, and he will grab you if you take too long. Right, use the keys on the door, run down the stairs, and go back to where you first got the keys. And that's it. We're done with this part. Okay, I'm at 47, 48 minutes here. If you're at one hour, you're running a little bit late, but you can still make it. But make sure you are under an hour during this part. Um, I'm only going to be grabbing some handgun and my pistol. So the pistol and the pistol ammo or the handgun and the handgun ammo and the key card. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. You need some handgun here because we're going to be doing some killing so i grabbed a full stack of handgun make sure you have enough handgun for about four to five dogs because we're going to be killing some dogs anyway let's continue onwards here let me remind you to leave a like if you haven't already this is your 50 minute mark and uh, anyway Use the key card, and this is where Mr. X will catch up to us, okay? This is a scripted event, so we're gonna run around this white car right here. Just very patiently, just very patiently, just run, and that's it. Run past the gate. There's a green herb right there. And... Make a right. So... 
this route is actually you have to follow it exactly as I do okay so go up to this door until this guy opens the door and then run around okay you can alternatively shoot the guy in the legs but I'm not risking it okay take the same route that I'm taking the same path the same path that I'm taking okay pass the ambulance pass a little tanky tank thing here APC vehicle and look easy peasy that one's squeezy we did it just keep running do not stop at all and this is where I'm gonna need you to get your big gamer pants on um, because you might get grabbed here by the zombie because she likes to run up the stairs. You can stop here and kill the bot, the, the dogs, but don't worry. We're going to be doing that in a second. So there we go. Shoot her. Go up the thing. Make sure you jump down before you start killing a dog. The dog should take about three to four bullets. That's how you know he's dead. Then to the next one, he will jump on top of the, the car. Or he might jump. He might jump over it. Anyway, he's dead. Go around the car and shoot the other one. Just don't let them kill you. There we go. Then into the basketball court. Right here. Before we grab anything, we're going to go to the middle of the basketball court and start shooting the bots, the dogs. Okay. There's two dogs here that you need to kill before you do anything. Then take a right, grab the items right here, and then there will be an extra dog. He has the most health out of all of them, okay? So if it takes you a while to kill him, don't worry. It's because he's meant to be, like, the, the, the mini boss. And that's it. Make sure every single dog is dead here. So all three of them. And we're going to grab the blue herb here. Again, these are not super necessary. Once you have like two or three, you should be fine. But anyway, grab the hand grenade and shoot this guy. And then we're going to be doing some zigzagging, okay? So we're going to be doing some dodging. Alternatively, if you don't want to get hit, you can just shoot this dog to death. But I'm just, I'm just running for it. You don't have to waste ammo there. But again, if you want to play it super safe, kill the dog. And make sure that the guy from the bus doesn't catch up to you, because that's probably the reason why I never shoot that dog. Anyway, we're going to go to up to the right here. And there's some items. We are almost at the second save, okay? So we're almost at the second checkpoint. So just got just to gotta keep going here. Take the first aid and the submachine gun ammo. That's it. So first aid and submachine gun ammo. And then we're gonna go downstairs. Alright, so once we encounter Sherry here, we're gonna keep running. Don't stop because Mr. X is right behind you. We're gonna keep running. Don't worry about Sherry, she's invincible, she's not gonna die. And uh, we're gonna run down the stairs here, and that should be the end of this segment. This is probably the final stretch. So after the cutscene, we're gonna grab some items here and store some. There's some Magnum ammo here, don't forget. This ink ribbon also, but you don't need it. You don't need this ink ribbon, because you only need three. Grab the some machine gun ammo, and then we're gonna store everything. And then this is the loadout that I'm going with. So I need the handgun, the handgun ammo, and the flash grenade, okay? So we're going to need one flash grenade. So hopefully you didn't use up all your flash grenades because we're going to be needing a flash grenade. So handgun, handgun ammo, and a flash grenade. 
This is essential for this part because, yeah, otherwise you're gonna get grabbed, you or me? you know you you can dodge, but we're playing it safe here. We're we're making it easy. This is the easy guide for Resident Evil 2 remake. Any you know, anyway, we're gonna go up here, get the blue herb, then get lost a little bit because you're tired, and yeah, so dumb. Anyway, and we're gonna go towards the light here. Stick to the left because there is an item that we need here. So this gunpowder is used to make uh, submachine gun ammo later and acid rounds. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna climb up this thing. And this is where I need you to get your big gamer pants on again. And we're gonna... We're gonna equip the flash grenade. So we're gonna equip the flash grenade. Make sure it's a flash grenade. It's not a knife or anything else. Okay, flash grenade. Im important. And then we're gonna slightly open the door. Okay, slightly open the door. And throw it in there. As soon as you throw it in there, run. Just run. Run, 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 run. Go to the left. Get the flame rounds. And then go to the right. Solve this puzzle. It is S, Z, F, or Z. There we go. And there is some... So machine gun ammo right there and we can just jump and we've reached the second save congratulations you should be around one hour right now if you are at one hour and 30 restart because you're not gonna make it okay anyway we're gonna save here second save so for this segment i'm only gonna take the handgun and the handgun ammo I'm also gonna grab this map because maps are cool and important. But unless you're me and you don't need maps. So I'm currently here at about 58 minutes or 56. I can't see, I'm blind. Um, but yeah, we're gonna enable this bridge to, you know, lower. And then we're gonna go to the left first. But yeah, let me remind you that this is a good time to take a break because we're going to be doing something really difficult. So drink, drink water, come back later. Or tomorrow it's a good time because you just saved or you can just keep going if you feel reckless we're gonna grab the red herb and the T bar valve handle okay after that we're gonna go to the rightmost part of this section right here there will be a zombie that can be triggered so do not touch him okay open this safe it is 2128 it is written on the side if you forget We go that will turn your revolver into a magnum stick to the right grab the blue herb combine it with the green with the red one and then we're gonna go back outside see where this neon says exit yeah we're gonna open this door watch out some enemies might run up the stairs here so i'm sticking to the left and then i'm aiming at this guy's head to the left right there Basically, we need to kill all three enemies in here, okay? So don't worry about waiting for your crosshairs because the red dot sight will always have your crosshairs together. So this is why we're more likely to land critical hits, as you can see there. Make sure they are dead, okay? They must be dead. All right. With the green herb, we are going to combine it with the blue and, green, with the blue and red. And then jump down here. There's a grenade right there. And a grenade. Pretty cool. Really nice. And uh, make sure that you kill this enemy right here. Also. Otherwise, he will grab you later. We're going to be transitioning through this area. We're going to be transiting through this area three times. So we need to kill all three enemies here. Make sure that they are dead. Even when they do that animation, sometimes they're still alive. So make sure you check them. All right. You don't have to do it in this order, but I just decided to use the T handle here if you want, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. You're not gonna need it anyway, but you're still gonna, I'm still gonna carry it with me. So before we go into the dark room, this is the dark area, the, the lower waterway is what it's called. It's one of the hardest parts in the entire game. And we're gonna go back to the safe room and we're gonna be doing some inventory management, okay? So let's do that.
So, we are going to take the handgun, the handgun ammo, one grenade, and one really bad knife. So, a like a broken, almost broken knife, if you have it. Your worst knife. And we're also bringing the T, the T handle. And so, I'm doing so because the G adults, which are the mutant things that you can find in the dark area in the lower waterway, they tend to grab you very easily and I'm gonna show you here uh, a strategy that actually does involve getting grabbed but of course you can do this without getting grabbed but I'm showing you the foolproof version of this okay okay again we have saved here at the sewers and we're not gonna save until the end of the game so the sewers takes about five to ten minutes at the most okay so really learn the sewers because if you die in the laboratory at the nest you will have to come back here and you have to do it again okay so <clears throat> all right so feel free to use this as a sort of practice if it's your first time doing it don't be afraid that you you know don't be discouraged if you do fail it's not gonna go well the first time unless you're like amazing Anyway, so, we're gonna go down the ladder. Don't grab anything other than this green herb, okay? The key that you found upstairs, don't don't touch it. We're not using that. Okay, we're gonna jump down here. So, there are multiple ways of doing this part. You can trigger him and then run past him, or you can just trigger him and make him run towards you. That's what that's what I'm gonna be doing, okay? So I'm gonna be shooting him and I'm gonna try to sh I'm gonna try to run past him, but he stunned me, so I'm gonna take a step back, okay? So he did a slam down there with his with his arm, so I just ran past him, okay? If they do the wiggly head, that also can means you can run past him. So I had my grenade equipped here, so it's best to have the grenade equipped here so that way they get pushed back. And remember, if you get grabbed here, just look for the red light and run towards it. Do not stop. There are some items down there, but we don't care about them. Trust me, you don't need them. So, as long as you only get grabbed once per run, um, you know, on the way there and on the way out there, you should be fine. So, you get the grenade for the first run and the knife for, you know, when, you, when you're ready to leave. So, we're going to grab the queen plug here. We're gonna examine it. If you're blind like me and need to be, to need to recognize, it's really difficult for you to recognize the symbols, or you don't know chess. Uh, feel free to examine it, and it'll change the name of the item to Queen Plug. That applies to all of the other plugs. Anyway, we're gonna grab the blue herb and uh, put the Queen Club there, uh, and then we're gonna immediately grab the King's Plug and then immediately run, 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 run past this guy. Don't shoot him or anything. Or if you want to play it safe, you can shoot him and run past him. But I'm going to use the King's Plug there and get the Spark Shot. Then, before we grab the King's Plug again, we're going to shoot this guy, stun him, grab the plug, and then run out. You don't have to kill him. You just make sure that he is stunned and he doesn't grab you, okay? We're going to retrieve the Queen's Plug. And we're going to insert it here. And then we're going to... Put the queen, the king plug here, and now we can go back and get the queen's plug, and that's it. It's very simple, very easy, very very easy. Anyway, don't forget to grab the king plug. Okay, so we're leaving this area with the spark shot, a few herbs, and the king and queen plug. So now on the way out, this will probably probably be different for you, uh, depending on you know what you did on your way here. So. If you encounter yourself with this situation, like you don't see any any mutants here, just run. Stick to the left, stick to the left, stick to the left, stick to the left, do not stop, stick to the left, just keep going straight. Keep going straight, keep going straight. Worst case scenario, there will be a, a mutant here and you will use your knife. But yeah, anyway, we're gonna go up here, then jump down and immediately to stick, stick to the right, climb this thing, wait for the dude to do his animation. When he goes down underwater, now, now is your chance. Run, run, run past them. And that's it. That's how you do it. It might take you a few tries to do this. I can guarantee 90% of the people will fail this on their first try. Don't be discouraged. Try again. Run the video back and rewatch it and try again. It only takes you 
two to five minutes to get to this point. It's not that big of a deal. And you'll end up learning something new. Hopefully. Anyway, we're going to go back before we grab the final plug. And uh, we're going to deposit some items. So in total, technically, we need two empty slots. But we're going to be playing it safe. And I'm also going to be grabbing a blue herb. So we're going to be depositing some items here. So I'm doing so uh, because, you know, I just I just want to make sure that you have enough stuff. Anyway, it, it only takes you a minute to, to deposit stuff anyway. So it's okay. Uh, so now that we've deposited some stuff, I'm bringing my handgun and my handgun ammo and the knife. If you didn't use the knife in the waterway, uh, just keep it with you because we are still going to go up against another G adult here. But this one is a lot easier. So interact with this lever right here. We're going to jump down and wait for the sluice. I think it's a sluice, right? So is, that a, is that a word? Anyway, this is a little gate thingy. Uh, and we're going to stick to the left. Do not stick to the right because you will get stunned by the guy. So just stick to the left. And then go up here. And we can finally use the T-handle here. And there will be some items that we need to pick up. Now, I need you to put your big gamer pants on. But it's not that difficult, don't worry. All right. Grab the Magnum ammo. Immediately go up the little Resident Evil style elevator. And we are going to stick to the right. Grab the handgun ammo. Do not grab anything else in here. Okay, don't. And then line it up. Run. Unlock this door. Run fast. Run fast. Do not stop. Do not stop. Grab the plug. 180 degree turn. Go back in. Stick to the left. Run. That's it. You have to do all of this before the fat guy on the floor gets back up. It might take you a few tries, but this is why I gave you the knife. So if the G guy is right here, wait for him to go down and immediately just jump. Stick to the left and then just jump down and then just run. That's it. That's how you do it. If he's still there kind of taunting you, wait for him to go underwater or do his little animation where his head goes like a little snake. Like... <laughs> And then you can run past him from the left. And that's it. We've done the, f the sewers. That's the final thing to do in the sewers. That's the last thing we need. Uh, I did it under 10 minutes. Again, if you will, I, I can almost guarantee that you will fail this area. So run it again, do it again, learn it, master it, and rewatch the video. We're going to deposit some things. But first, we're going to grab all of the other plugs. So the qu queen, the king, and the rook. And this is the combination for it. In the middle, on the right side, we have the queen. On the leftmost side of the right side, we can pick up the bishop and then replace it with the king. Okay, so queen and then left king. On the other side, the leftmost one has the bishop. And in the middle, we put the rook. And then on the right side, it is the knight. It's very simple. That's it. The knight, or also known as horse in other languages, like Italian and Spanish. Um, anyway, so my loadout for this boss fight is going to be a little bit different than my other playthroughs. So we're going to be grabbing the SMG. And we're also going to be taking uh, a grenade and a flash grenade one knife so we've got the smg one grenade handgun handgun ammo flash grenade 200 smg ammo one knife and one heal of your choice and i'm leaving two empty inventory slots open okay all right i'm gonna grab this and i'm gonna combine it and then we will get the red one in here right here so yes so for this puzzle, all we have to do is activate one, two, and four. And then we're going to go back through the door that we used to enter this area. And there it is. After that cutscene, we're going to go under this fan and we're going to sit here until he goes away.
So when you see him banging up against the door, just literally just do this. Run, 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 just run, 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 run. Just just aim at the door and just continue holding forwards. And then just keep going because he can catch up to you here, okay? If you wait, if you're too late, if you're like one millisecond too late, he will catch up to you. So that's it. Okay, so we're gonna open up here with either a flash grenade or a heavy grenade. I prefer flash grenades, but sometimes it doesn't work. So it's up to you decide we're gonna uh, interact with the crane and then grab the knife and the flash grenade from the floor then we're gonna use either our handgun or our smg to shoot his shoulder eye don't bother about don't don't care about picking up stuff right now um just make sure that he does not grab, get you so he will have a three move combo right there that three move combo ends up with him being expo exposing his right eye so yeah if he leans back like that, he, it means he's going to jump up to you. So just take a step back. If he hits you like this, it's okay. Hopefully you have the blue and green and red herb. So we're going to drink. We're going to eat that. And then we're going to equip our knife. If, if you put him down like this, go behind him and stick to his right big arm. And get his leg and his arm at the same time. This That way we're hitting him twice. Okay, So we're slashing at him once, but he's taking double damage. That's why the knife strategy is good. So... We're gonna take a step back as soon as he gets back up. As soon as he starts getting back up, I'm using the handgun to shoot his uh, shoulder eye. This is really good because it has a really good laser sight, so it's pretty good. Um, you might get hit here a few times. It's perfectly fine. The best thing you can do is equip your flash grenade when, not, when you're not knifing him, okay? So equip your flash grenade or, or hand grenade. So the hand grenade is actually more useful because it deals more damage. Anyway, we're continuously trying to shoot him until he goes down like this and then repeat get behind him big arm small leg and then knife him so get him twice your objective is to get him down to red hp so how do you know you put him down to red hp when his eyes actually turn red so you know you're ready when his eyes are fully red so you can see uh, i'm gonna be using the smg um so i prefer using the um the, the EMP here on his right right eye because it's it deals a lot more damage. But either one of these works. There we go. His his back eye also. He has a he has an eye on the back. If you put him down like that, after his eye is like orange or red, go immediately to the crane. If he starts getting back up, throw the flash grenade. But anyway, that's how you do the Birkin. Essentially you need to put him down to red HP with your knives and your pistols and SMG. And then that's it. When, when his eye turns red, that means you're ready. You've dealt enough damage. You can use the crane. And that's how we do the crane Birkin fight, also known as G2 Birkin. And we are fully done with everything except the nest. So let's get ready because we're not going to be saving until the very end. Cable car. Hold on, Sherry. You're going to be fine. Almost there, Sherry. We're almost there. Is bound for nest. Do not exit until the final destination. So, friendly reminder to leave a like if you haven't already. Uh, if you've been enjoying this playthrough, I'm getting you treatment. Just hold I know on most of you only care about RE4, or you know, <laughs> you don't. You probably don't need this guide, but hopefully you found it entertaining. We're entering the final 35 to 40 minutes here. This is actually one of 
the most satisfying areas to do if you learn it. So let's get learning, okay? Okay. So if you didn't grab the grenade launcher like I did, it will be right here on this table. Right there. But I don't have room in my inventory, so we're going to leave it for later. I'm going to grab the map next to the pizza box. And uh, yeah, don't forget the grenade launcher there. We're going to grab it later because I'm not going to use it yet. But first, I'm going to uh, change my inventory up here. So I'm going to be, be bringing with me, I'm going to be taking with me my handgun, my handgun ammo, my, my wristband. And you can also heal if you are in need of healing. Um, it's, I recommend that you're at full health here because we're about to do some dangerous stuff. Okay. This is another big gamer moment here. Okay. This is the dark hallway. So we're going to immediately run in. Do not wait. Just go, just go right, grab the, grab the grenade and then immediately turn around, stick to the left, grab the needles right there. And then run around here to this table, grab the hand grammo and then run, run around these tables and go up the ladder. Do not hesitate because you will take damage. Literally do not hesitate. If if one of the zombies starts coming up to you, shoot him in the shoot him in the legs. Go up the ladder and then jump down here. So, you don't need this big gunpowder, but I'm grabbing it anyway. Uh, there's also a knife here, so very slowly aim at this door, but don't go through it. See there's a guy right there. So, our objective is to kill this guy. But uh, he he doesn't want to track you. But yeah, there we go. So shoot him in the head. Hopefully he dies. But anyway, yeah, you, you have to kill him. This is a mandatory enemy to kill. So make sure he is dead. Like, really dead. Okay, so after that we're going to take a right. And uh, we're going to grab the uh, items here. The red grenades. The upgrade to the wristband. We're going to combine it with the green wristband. And we're gonna open up these lockers. There's an upgrade for the spark shot. And that's it. So, we're gonna stick to the right. That way, zombies from the other rooms do not break into this area. But uh, yeah, you can never be too careful. And now we are ready to grab the grenade launcher. So, we're gonna go, to, we're gonna go back to the Sherry, Sherry's room. And we're going to grab the grenade launcher. Do not forget, it's insanely important, okay? You don't have to do inventory management right now, but I'm I'm obsessed. So I'm going to put stuff away anyway. So there we go. I'm just bringing my handgun and my handgun ammo. There is a file here that you could be missing. It's very easily missable. But yeah, the computers and all that, they count as files. If you care about that stuff, uh, I don't, I don't, I just, I, I, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure uh, I've I've done this so many times that I don't I, somehow I still don't even remember where all the files are. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna go across here, and uh, yeah, that's it. We're almost done. Um, okay, so we're gonna reach another safe room here, which is called lobby. This is an important room for later because. This is actually where I have changed things up a bit from my original playthrough. Now, remember what I told you at the beginning of the game? We're not upgrading the grenade launcher. Well, unfortunately, in this playthrough, I forgot about that. And I did end up upgrading the, the grenade launcher. And that makes it a two inventory slot weapon. So I recommend you don't upgrade the grenade launcher until the very last boss... Birkin, the G3 Birkin, not the very last, but you know, the semi-final one. So we're going to take the ammo, the handgun ammo, uh, the grenade launcher, the wristband, the blue wristband, and um, yeah, don't, don't upgrade the grenade launcher. It's really not necessary until the end. Um, and uh, we're going to take some other things with us, but yeah, so take at least six flame rounds with you, okay? We're taking at least six flame rounds. And uh, we're gonna be clearing out some areas here with the flame, the flame rounds. But uh, yeah, so I'm making this incredibly foolproof. Okay, these Ivy people, they are one shots. Okay, the the Ivy enemies. We're gonna grab this item here on the table. So that's why I'm 
making you kill these enemies. Because I don't want you to die on your way back. <laughs> so, yeah. So make sure they are charred. They are completely burnt. Okay? You, you'll know they are completely dead when their body is completely, you know, burnt to a crisp. Like, really, really, really dark. But this one still means it's still alive. If you see the little tentacles moving, it's still, it's still alive. So, we're gonna go back there and kill them in a second, don't worry. But yeah, don't be afraid, just use your, your flamethrower. Your flame, your flame rounds there, don't worry. So to get this guy down, I'm just gonna shoot him with a pistol, and then I'm gonna use my grenade launcher there. And really, really make sure that they're both really, really burnt to a crisp. Because if they're still green, they'll still come back to life, and you just wasted some grenade launcher. So, it usually takes two. If you're lucky, it takes one. Uh, I think if you kill all of the bulbs and then shoot them with a grenade launcher, it takes one, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, let's solve this puzzle. Not much of a puzzle. And the second code is this one. This never changes, by the way. So it's the same for both Leon and Claire. We only need those two because we're cool. Anyway, we're gonna interact with this orange panel here and this will give us the solution. So now our goal is to upgrade this thingy. Uh, don't grab this red herb. Uh, it's, it's gonna it's gonna mess up with your inventory management. I don't recommend it, but you can do it. Also, you don't need anything in this room. Uh, you really don't. Uh, there is a grenade here, and there is a big gunpowder, I think, but you only need the, the the synthesis machine here. So we're gonna insert the the item, and then the combination is red, green, blue. So green. So red, green, blue, red, green blue then red green so once again red green blue red green blue red green so rgb rgb rg there you go that's how you do it it's two times rgb and three times rg anyway i'm grabbing the hand grenade here but i honestly i honestly don't think you need it and I honestly don't think you need this either, but I'm combining it with the white gunpowder, making a acid rounds, which is not necessary, but you know, it's whatever. It's up to you. As long as you know, as long as you have at least one cartridge or whatever of acid rounds, and by the end of the game, you, you should be fine. You don't need more than six acid rounds is what I'm trying to say. So, and we have plenty of, of gunpowder if you've been following along with me, so don't worry about it. Anyway. Yeah, you don't need the big gunpowder there. Like I said, you really don't. I'm grabbing the map just so you feel better about yourself. Better about yourself. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be equipping the hand grenade here, okay? So I need you to land this hand grenade perfectly. You need to kill three enemies with this hand grenade. Actually, it's four enemies. So landing it in there and turning around and grab the flame rounds. And then we're going to equip our pistol. This guy usually survives and then we're going to shoot him in the face. Make sure that everyone is dead, okay? Make sure that all of the enemies are dead. This is where you would combine your green herb with your red herb, but it's okay. We have like a million herbs. Anyway, there will be a liquor here, so we're walking. Stick to the right side where this light is. Trigger the liquor for a little bit, okay? Make sure that he tracks you down. Then we're going to slowly walk back, and then we're going to stick to the left. Stick to the left and walk past him. Don't step on their, on their nails because they will kill you, so... They're, they're claws. So we're gonna slowly open this door because sometimes there's an enemy behind this door. There he is. Shoot him in the face. Make him regret it. And then we're gonna be doing some inventory management once we get upstairs. So don't get scared. You, you're, you're gonna... There you go. See? There's a guy that's gonna rain down on you. So you have two options. You either stun him later or kill him now. I recommend you kill him now. So go for headshots. Make sure he is dead or at least crawling. Uh, you know, just make sure he's not a problem. Make sure he's not walking, basically. Um, but yeah, so. I'm gonna go up here. Sometimes there's an enemy here rushing. Watch out. So, um, I'm 
I recommend you kill her. I recommend you kill her. Before you go through this door. If you feel brave, you can stun her and run past her. Like I did there. But anyway, we're going to do some inventory management. So we're going to put the grenade launcher away. We're going to put the acid rounds away, the herb, and the flash grenade. We're bringing our handgun and our handgun ammo. And the vaccine thingy, the solution, and the wristband. We should be around in 1 hour and 20 or so. See, this is why I recommend you kill her before you go through the, the lobby area. Um, because otherwise she will be blocking the door like, I, like you're seeing right now. So just, just, if this happens to you, just keep, keep opening the door until she like moves away and try, just try to shoot her. There we go. I landed at critical, but anyway, make sure this zombie is dead before you go into the lobby. But yeah, there's a white gunpowder and there's some handgun ammo and we need the modulator here. So we're going to interact with the modulator and we're going to select Murph. And we are going to tune it like so. Might take you might take you a little bit to get the hang of it, but it's not that difficult. And now we're ready to go back down. Make sure there is no enemy here, okay? Do not get grabbed, because that'll complicate everything if you do get grabbed and take damage here. We're gonna run down the stairs, run through these doors, and um start walking here start walking and watch out for the liquors because there's two don't run literally just walk walk as far away as possible from them and since we already set up our modulator we can just interact with this this thing and just input it there and this will reset the power i don't know how i don't know the, i don't know the technicalities behind that but it's that's how it works Anyway, we're gonna slowly walk around this liquor. Sometimes he gets triggered. If you if he gets triggered, just start running. Just start running to this door. But uh, if it gets triggered, but otherwise you can just walk. Just walk. You have enough time. Anyway, now we're ready to get the the final solution. You can just input it here. And we can skip this cutscene unless you want to see a cool mechanical arm doing its thing. Capcom flexing its animation budget. Uh, there is some gunpowder there that if you want, but I don't recommend it because you're not going to be using the pistol after <laughs> after a certain area. But um, yeah, now we're ready. We're ready to go, go into the server room. So we're going to go back out here. Walk. Just walk. You got to walk it, okay? Just, just got to walk. Gotta walk. Make sure that you're not too close to the liquors, because even if you're walking, they can still detect you if you're too close. Um, so, yeah, just keep walking. And this is the server room right here. And we can grab everything here. So there's white gunpowder, there's flame rounds, and there is a knife. Go. Now we can do some more inventory management. So my loadout here is the grenade launcher, about six rounds, the modulator, the wristband, the handgun with no ammo, just fully loaded handgun, and one knife. So you don't have to do it perfectly like this. Uh, like I said, don't upgrade the grenade launcher until the end, because otherwise you will have inventory problems like I did here. That's why I was a bit confused. But uh, yeah, so if you really want to, there is a big gunpowder here, but at this point, if you've been grabbing everything that I've been to telling you about, you should have at least two big powders, and you don't need more than one. So I'm telling you this because I made the mistake of grabbing that, and then I realized I didn't need it. But uh, alas. Anyway, we're gonna go through the middle here. The enemy placement here might be a little bit random, so... If you see an IV person, shoot them in the orange spots on their body. This will stun them and you can run past them, okay? So we're gonna dispense the deadly solution here. This will uh, make them all fall to the ground. So this is really good for us because we can take them out. So we're gonna go into the middle one and shoot him, okay? So like I said before, sometimes they die in one hit. Sometimes they turn completely dark and they die. If you hit all of the bulbs, I guess, they die immediately. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna take out this guy. 
There will be more, by the way. So they will be approaching you. Just pretty much take out at least three of them. Two to three. It's fine. I took out two because of my enemy placement here was very, very good. So I just decided to only kill two. So make sure that at least, you know, the ones that are in your way are dead. We're going to get the purple senior stuff upgrade. And this will wake up the IV right here. So see how he has orange stuff on it? Yeah. I'm just... Just shoot him once and run past. If you see more ivies here, do the same thing. Don't shoot him with the grenade launcher unless you really need to. Don't make the same mistake I made here. Don't run into this room. But thankfully, I told you to bring a knife and we have a ton of knives. So yeah, this is me just taking my anger out on him because he grabbed me and I was just like, damn it, I'm just gonna kill you, man. But uh, yeah, go slowly into this door, room or whatever you want to call it. And uh, shoot that guy once in the, the orange stuff and just run past him. But yeah, watch out. There's a there's an ivy here. But since we killed everyone in this room at the beginning, we are just cruising. We're just running. And we're literally done. We're almost done. We're almost done. Yeah, we're fully done almost with um, the nest here. So I'm going to be doing something extra that you don't have to do. But I recommend you do it. So I'm currently at 1 hour and 35 or, you know, you should be around an hour 35, an hour 50. That's perfect. You have enough time to do any everything. So, if you have, if you're under two hours, I recommend you go to the north area here and make a make a slight detour. What we're gonna do, what we're gonna be doing here is getting the extra hip pouch, the extra inventory pouch. Uh, this is completely optional, but it will make your life a lot easier. Okay, so I actually recommend you do this. And if you don't, if you do skip it, you will probably have an extra two minutes to spare, but you will sacrifice two item slots. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna be careful here because there might be enemies. Because sometimes they bleed into the room when the the automatic doors open. So yeah, keep that in mind. So this one is muff. So we are going to select muff and then we're gonna tune it. And then we're gonna insert it into the muff. And then we're gonna grab the hip pouch here from the bed. And then there's a file there if you wanna talk to him. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna leave. And that's all we needed. That's all we're gonna be doing. There also is a Mr. Raccoon there if you're, if you're trying to do that. But uh, yeah, now we're gonna go back and get ready for the final boss. So we're going to get the hand grenade here from the floor and then we're going to do the final modulator thingy. It's OSS. <sighs> Once again, I appreciate you being here. <laughs> this was, uh, I already had a lot of playthroughs of Claire, but I wanted to do, do an actual guide for her. But anyway, we're going to discard the modulator and then we're going to go to the left here and grab the blue herb once again you don't need blue herbs at this point but they're just nice to have i guess they they do give you shields so if you combine it with a red herb so there's that so we're gonna get ready for the g3 work in here which is probably my favorite boss fight of all time honestly and also we're about to save for the third time once again, these saves are just suggestions, but I think they're the best currently uh, based on this strategy. Um, once again, shout outs to the people who uh, came up with a lot of the strategies that I'm using here. Unfortunately, that was back when I wasn't making content, so I don't remember who it was, but it was a combination of a lot of strategies but uh, i can't take full credit for everything here i've learned a lot from back in the day but anyway we're gonna save here um and we're gonna organize our inventory here all right so this is the time to combine any big powders with the white powder to make at least five to six 
uh, acid rounds, 10 if you're paranoid. So we're gonna be bringing uh, 10 flame rounds, one knife, one handgun, the grenade launcher with the upgrade, one red, green, and blue herb, a full stack of handgun ammo. We're gonna eat a red and green herb or, you know, just make sure you have a shield and um, on the way there. And we are also going to be taking a um, the SMG with us, okay? So handgun, handgun ammo, grenade launcher upgraded, knife, full heal with the herbs, uh, 200 SMG ammo, 10 acid rounds, 10 grenade uh, rounds, and we're also gonna be taking some SMG with us just to make sure. So about 300 of SMG should be enough. But yeah, full inventory. We're also gonna be taking the wristband with us because we're cool like that. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. So we're gonna open up by using the TMP on the bottom right leg, like so. And then we're gonna shoot the arm and then we're gonna take a step back. Equip your grenade launcher with the acid rounds and shoot it and then get out of the situation. So the acid rounds are to be used for, you know, stunning him and getting him out of your way. And then once this happens to you, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if it dealt enough damage or whatever, but uh, he went into phase two already. But anyway, if he opens up his arms like that, you're supposed to go behind him and um, knife him. I'll show you in a second, but anyway, I'm using the uh, acid rounds to get out of situations like these. See how he, he gets stunned for like five seconds? Yeah, you can also use it for damage because acid deals a crap ton of damage. It's like magnum. If he starts jumping like that, if he crouches, that means he's gonna jump and deal a lot of damage. Get your distance, use your handgun because it has a really good laser and shoot the eyes. If he gets too close like that, he either will grab the thing or will, you know, try to attack you. So shoot his eye, don't let him grab the thing. If you feel daring, you can get really close to him. And yeah, anyway, like I, like I taught you before, uh, the slam usually means he will expose his shoulder. If you take some damage, it's okay. There's a lot of healing in this room. And I also told you to bring some healing. I did take damage here, but it's okay. It's, it's fine. As long as you put him in red health, uh, you should be okay. Once again, use your weapon of choice. But yeah, see the slam? Okay. As soon as you break all three eyes, immediately equip your knife and get behind him. See how he has two arms and his torso exposed like that? Yeah, we're knifing him three times right now, even though we're swiping once. See, look at that. And my knife is almost broken because of that, see? So I'm going back to acid rounds, and I'm gonna shoot him in the chest uh, with the... Actually, I'm gonna shoot him with the, uh, with the flames. So once he goes into his final form like this, he will do this thing in the middle. He will start grabbing this pillar. Just unload your flame rounds. We won't be using the flame rounds for anything else. So once he starts grabbing the big thing, just unload your flame rounds. If he starts running at you and you get scared, just equip your acid rounds to get out of the situation like this, see? And then we're just gonna get out of here and I'm just gonna slowly walk past. And then I'm just gonna use all of my acid rounds on him because I'm not gonna be using acid rounds anymore. And that's how you do it. That's probably the best way to do the Birkin. You know, you can do it without taking damage. I have done it without taking damage, but hey, I've done this like a million times. You can't have the same outcome every time. But anyway, the only things you need from this room are the spark shot needles and the uh, first aid spray. So spark shot needles and first aid spray. Only things you need. There's also hand grenade, which is very useful, but that's about it. So after you've grabbed the spark shot needles and the first aid spray in this room, we are gonna go up the small elevator. You can grab anything else that you want, but I only need the spark shot needles and the first aid spray. All right, go up the elevator and get ready for the last 10 minutes of this playthrough. So you should be at around two hours, maybe two hours and 15. If you're at 220, you might make it, but I don't recommend it, but anyway. If you're at 220, you pretty you pr consider pretty much restarting. But uh, yeah, so now we go back to Sherry with the antiviral agent. So with the antiviral agent, Sherry will be cured and we can complete our story.
So I'm actually going to be doing some inventory management here, making sure that I have at least two slots open so I can pick up anything on the way. Let's go back to the room with the pizza and let's get Sherry. Combine your wristband with Sherry's number four, whatever. I don't know why she had that the entire time, but anyway, I guess she was the daughter of the scientists here. But yeah, let's take the elevator down and enjoy the ride. Okay, so we're gonna grab this first aid spray here, just so you have enough stuff for the final boss. And uh, there's also a knife here, just in case you get grabbed. And we're gonna equip our pistol here. There is a there is a item box here if you want, but I'm not gonna waste time run to the elevator and there will be three ivies that you have to dodge now you have two options you either play it safe or play it smart so you can either shoot them in the orange stuff or run past i'm gonna run past run past before they get up run past run past just keep going you have a knife even if they grab you you survive so just keep running just keep running follow the same trajectory as me there's a green herb just in case you get hurt and uh, there's also some handgun ammo here if you want to waste that extra 20 seconds of your run to grab the handgun ammo, uh, you can go ahead and do that if you want. Uh, it's not strictly necessary because you should have a full inventory uh, of handgun ammo right now. Uh, a full stack. Anyway, interact with the door and that will teleport Sherry to your side. And she will tell you, hold on, I'm going to open the door from the other side. So you have to now survive two IVs now. Use everything that you've learned so far and shoot the IVs in the orange spots, right? Like that. So after you shoot them in all spots, they will actually drop to the floor and just pretty much be stunned for like a whole minute. So yeah, so just make sure you stall for time here while Sherry opens the door. Okay, so the final zombie of the entire game will be here. You can shoot him in the face if you want, or you can just, you know, not. But I'm just gonna kill him. And there will be a herb on the right side, right after this bridge, which, by the way, looks like Code Veronica, I just realized. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna open the door, and this is the final loadout, okay? The final item box, so get ready. We need two slots open. I'm gonna put the handgun and the handgun ammo away. I'm gonna take the SMG. I'm gonna take the submachine gun ammo. I'm gonna combine the spark shot with the high voltage condenser upgrade. I'm gonna combine the reinforced frame with the revolver. I'm gonna take out all of the hand all of the magnum ammo that I have. Combine the revolver with the reinforced frame. This will turn it into a magnum. Make sure you equip the magnum ammo on your revolver, then put the handgun ammo away uh, we're gonna combine the spark shot with the upgrade take 200 smg ammo i will also eat a shield so a blue and green herb a blue and red herb or a red and green blue herb if you have any to spare just make sure you have a shield basically and then we're gonna grab another two shields uh, i'm gonna get the spark shot needles and I'm gonna put away the wrist band so combine any possible white gunpowder that you may have to make all of the SMG ammo that you can uh, get so we need two stacks of SMG ammo 
two heals, one magnum, at least seven spark shots to spare, and two empty slots, okay? So this is my final loadout right here. Uh, but make sure you're fully topped up on SMG ammo, because this will be the most important ammo that you get. Make sure you have two slots in your inventory open. Make sure you know all of your shortcuts. One, two, three, four, up, down, left, right, and uh, let's get to work. So if you've never used a spark shot before, basically you have to land the needles and then continue holding the aim down the sides button. So if you're on PlayStation, it'll be left trigger or L2, and this will deal a lot of damage. If you're playing on PC, just continue aiming with your mouse and after you shoot, and this will deal a lot of damage. But anyway, we're gonna insert the joint plug into the panel here. And then we're gonna skip the cutscene and then grab the minigun. Do not forget the minigun. Do not forget the minigun. Equip the SMG. As soon as the cutscene ends, we're going to aim at Birkin and shoot all of the eyes. So we have to kill an, a total of four or five sets of eyes for him to go into his next phase. So make sure you break all the eyes, basically. If he starts doing that, that means you will be rushed. Don't ever stand in that part, by the way, the smaller part of the platform, the, the angles, the corners, that means you will die. But anyway, break all of the eyes. Just destroy all the eyes. He will regenerate them. That's why you need to kill like five or so. But anyway, if he's far away enough, aim at the eyes and then shoot the spark shot, then unload. If he starts going up like that, you can use hand grenades here if you so desire, but no. We're just gonna stand here on this side of the, the world. There we go. Just as soon as, as long as you stick to the tram, close to the tram, you won't take damage. I made a mistake there. I went to the area that I told you not to go to, and uh, yeah, that, it's okay, but we can heal later. If he starts charging you like that, I'm just gonna hold the right and dodge him. But yeah, destroy all of the eyes. There is no real like proper strategy here other than dodge and continuously get out of his way. Uh, only use the spark shot if you have a clear shot of the eyes, okay? The uh, spark shot also stops him in his track if he's rushing sometimes. So if he goes up like that, you can shoot him with the minigun if you want but make sure you have to land it on the orange eyes. Don't ever stand in that spot that I was just standing at because he will always land on you like that. 90% of the time, you will take damage if you stand in the smaller area of the platform. So yeah, vertical area, I don't know what you want to call it, but anyway. Park shot, very powerful, more powerful than the Magnum, by the way. Uh, you can use the Magnum to destroy the eyes if you so desire. There we go. Just make sure you're constantly killing those eyes. Um, get away from that. That is a very annoying hit. Heal as soon as possible. There we go. I sacrifice a grenade just to be able to heal. Anyway, if he goes, keeps going up like that, we're just gonna shoot all the eyes and he will fall down. And then we're just gonna continue shooting him. There we go. So when the eyes turn red, that means you've been doing good, and he will probably go into his final form. There we go. He's taking a lot of damage. Go. Just continue shooting him with the SMG. This is why we need two stacks of SMG ammo. Just get 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 your distance. Uh, you can start shooting him with the magnum when he's red like this. Just make sure you get the bigger ones first, because they take more damage. The bigger targets. But yeah, like I said, if you stand in that area, you will always take damage. Um, yeah, you can heal here if you want, but... There we go. He will always fall on you, see? If you stand on that part. I'm also using the Spark Shot here on the red eyes. This deals a ton of damage to him, and once he starts doing that, he's, he's pretty much dead. If he starts crawling out to you like this, just unload with the minigun. Whenever he starts crawling like this, literally just shoot the eyes with the minigun. Just just don't worry, just hold down the trigger, and you're done. You did it. It's over. Congratulations, you got your S+. Plus. Hopefully, um, that was a little bit of a scuffed version of that fight. 
But anyway, leave a like, subscribe with all notifications and leave a comment. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Check out the Leon S Plus guide and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.